I've been mining down here for a full week now. And I gotta say, my arms are getting tired. Hey there, hi there, ho oh there. Welcome everybody to another Minecraft episode on the Project Hydra server. This is Season 2, Episode 6. My name is Fandoman, and it is a pleasure to have you all aboard. Starting things off in this episode, we are at my trading hall. It is a dual trading hall. I got piglins on this side, I got villagers on this side, and they all deal in gold. My gold farm is right above here on the nether roof. So I got the gold ingots just streaming in through here, through this little funnel system, distributed evenly to all the piglins right here, in which they will trade for all these goodies and all the leftover gold ingots and rotten flesh. I can trade with the cleric villagers, which I have zombified and re-zombified and all that good stuff, all of them giving me extraordinary discounts for maximum emeralds. And what am I gonna do with all these fine products? I'm gonna sell them. That's right. I have 27 shulker boxes filled with various goodies, sellable things from my trading hall, my farms, and other things that I've come across in my travels. And I'm going to load all these up into my inventory. And we're going to ship these over to Bloxco and put them on the market. Look at that. A full inventory with shulker boxes. Each one with a different product. This is going to be so profitable. I'm so excited for this. Today is probably going to be the most profitable episode of the season. Because coming up, I have a special challenge. But first, let's get these over to Bloxco. As you can see, my nether tunnel is nearing completion. The deep slate and copper is a very nice build palette, and it contrasts very well and gives an industrial look to the nether. I also have this tunnel here, which will be ice boat, and when it's completed, we will be able to go to all the Bloxco members' bases Danny, Chairman, Domino, Maddie, and I will all be connected through ice boat rails and we'll be able to go to each other's base in seconds. And here we are, the Bloxco Warehouse. Let's find a spot to move these sellables. Since they're already packaged up, I think I could just leave them... Yeah, I'll just leave them down here on the bottom floor. And I'll let Domino decide how she wants to organize them in here. 27 shulker boxes filled to the brim with resources to sell. From gravel, to redstone, to honeycomb, to honeycomb blocks, to amethyst shards, black stone, warp stems, crimson stems, soul sand, Glowstone, this was hard to get. Kelp, useful things for everyone to enjoy. I hope this sells really well on the Bloxco warehouse market. In the meantime, let's head back to base because I have something very special to show everyone today. Look at me, the greatest Fandalorian to ever live, stuck in a minecart. How could this get any worse? We're back at our base, and it's time to begin our special project of the episode. I have here, stuck on my wall, a shulker box filled with mining supplies. I got enough charcoal, sticks, and wood for enough torches for a lifetime. I also created nine Hydra's Choice Silk Touch pickaxes. Those plus my two regular Silk Touch pickaxes gives me 11 diamond pickaxes for an extraordinary mining session. Now you may be asking yourself, hey Fando, why do you need so many diamond pickaxes? Are you going on a diamond mining challenge? Indeed I am, friend. 
Indeed I am. I'm a big fan of Hermitcraft, and Season 7 was one of my favorite seasons. Yes, I know they're on Season 9 right now, but Season 7 was really good. And Iskal85 made a challenge to the other hermits to see if they could obtain 1,000 diamonds in a single episode. And I aim to take on that very challenge for this episode. Starting with absolutely zero diamonds, I'm going to fill this shulker with as many diamonds as I possibly can. Before we head out on this glorious expedition, let's stock up on some supplies. Wait a minute, what's this? To Fando. Go to 505, 143, negative 245. It will be worth it, winky face. A winky face? I can't resist a winky face. Change of plans, this takes priority. What's in the chest? A diamond block. An excellent head start. Nine diamonds down, 991 to go. Now, is this nether coordinates? Or is it overworld coordinates? I confused myself, it is not in the nether. 143, I'm looking at it. Aha, another coordinate. Hmm, is there anything in it? Another diamond block. At this rate, I won't even need to mine for my thousand diamonds in this episode. They'll all just be handed to me on a silver platter. 87, ha ha ha. Three diamond blocks. And more coordinates. Uh -huh. More coordinates. Another diamond block. Uh -huh. You, sir, are a decoy. More coordinates. And another diamond block. Uh -huh. This is the sixth one. It's empty. Uh -huh. What have we got here? Ooh. Nine diamond blocks for a total of 14. Now this was a quest. Whoever put this on, thank you very much. I enjoyed this. This was very fun. So, once again, we're back at our base here. But I have this special soul sand tunnel leading out to a remote portal in the middle of nowhere. This is going to be the perfect spot to begin our little mining expedition. It's out of the way from everyone else so there's no chance I'll intrude on anyone else's builds. Three pairs of boots later. And here we are. We are ready to begin the challenge. So I've done some research, and I found, according to the official Minecraft wiki, that diamonds are most commonly found between the Y levels of 14 and negative 63. Uh, more common as we go down. So I will be going all the way down to negative 63, and that's where I'll start my branch mining. So just sit back and relax and enjoy a nice little time lapse. <music> I think that went pretty well after the first day. I had three hours to spare, and I have myself 74 blocks of deep slate diamond ore. I've only destroyed one pickaxe, 
so I have plenty of resources to keep going. Whether or not I have enough time to keep going is a different story. So I'm going to try again tomorrow after work, and we'll see how many diamonds I can get after that. In the meantime, please enjoy these words from today's sponsor. Today's episode is brought to you by Deep Slate. Deep Slate is a type of stone that can be found at the darkest, deepest depths of any Minecraft world. In addition to being very ugly, Deep Slate takes almost twice as long to mine as normal stone does, making it one of the most tedious blocks to gather in all of Minecraft. I mean, sure, you can make all this using Deep Slate, but... But Andesite... I mean, Deep Slate does have good contrast when placed next to copper, but so does Andesite. Deep Slate may be easy to locate and mineable from the ground, but andesite literally grows on trees. At least with deep slate, the further down you go, the higher your chance of finding diamonds. So remember the next time you hit rock bottom, think of deep slate. Deep slate. It isn't andesite, but it'll do. Hello. That is two days worth of mining. And I have gone through two and a quarter pickaxes and I've obtained three and a quarter stacks of diamond ore. They're about uh, a third of the way there. I have been summoned back to Bloxco to work on some redstoning. So let's head on over there and take a quick break. Ah yes, Bloxco. My home away from places that aren't my home. The plan was to put a large glass wall with some form of redstone key door approximately right here. So I'm going to need some handy dandy redstone work to get this done. And speaking of handy dandy, it's time for Handicraft Corner. So on today's installment of Handicraft Corner, I'm going to be showing you how to create a redstone key door. A door that only opens when a specific item is placed into its key slot. That way you can keep the people you don't want to access out and allow the people you do want to have access in. Minus cheaters, of course. But this is the Project Hydra server, so we don't have cheaters here. So everybody's fair and honest, and that's what makes us great. So the thing with this wall here is that it's only one wide going from here all the way down. But that doesn't mean the door has to be that width either. So what I'm thinking... I have a little bit of space here. I'm probably going to go right through here. We'll just do one layer of glass on top. Three hoppers on top here in the middle and one on each side. What's going to happen is whoever has the, their key, they're just gonna throw it at the door it's going to be sucked up by this little hopper here, and it's going to go through the thingy. Now we just need some sticky pistons right here. I may have to expand the brick out just to cover things up. So the repeater is going to go here. I'm going to put a brick here and redstone torch here. And the door is closed. We'll have to go down and create a line of redstone torches. I think the best way to do a vertical scaffolding downward it's with the good old water bucket okay take this and that should be good there now I can put redstone on that now we're on to the next step the sorting system is going to be the most important aspect of this machine this chest here when the door's closed, we'll be able to access all the things that people throw in that aren't supposed to be there. Now this dust right here is going to be super important because I'm going to connect that up over to here and that is going to be what opens the door. Now we also want to make sure that when the door opens, it stays open long enough for somebody to get in. 
but not so long that they can let in their entire friends, family, and neighborhood from back home. So what we want to do is create a redstone pulse extension that allows this torch to stay off a little bit longer. So when somebody throws an item into this storage system, it works near flawlessly. And we'll just put a double chest here. And that goes into there. So all the membership cards just go here, get filtered by this hopper, which we can now put our little filters in here. So when you throw a piece of stone in, door opens, you come on through, and then it closes. And to get back out, you do the same exact thing. It's going to be stone for now, but we'll eventually get the membership cards all printed out and then people can use those as intended. And then just make it look pretty, and we're in business. So we got our glass wall up here so that no one can get onto the other side without inserting a key, which in our example, we have stone. So we throw it in, and it opens up, and our key appears on the other side. Uh, what I did off camera was I just did a little red stoning down here to allow for new keys to be dispersed on the proper side of the door. Obviously, we don't want uh, keys to be dispersed on the other side of the door. So this is the best solution to that. So you may be asking yourself, okay, so if the key only comes out here, how do I get my key back when going out? Well, it's actually very simple. If you stand right here and you throw your key in, you get your key right before you head out. So that way, no one ever loses their membership card. But there you have it. The fully functional redstone door that's key card operated. So if your friends don't find you captivating, they should at least find you crafty. So if you'd excuse me, I gotta get back to mining. I've been mining down here for a full week now and I gotta say my arms are getting tired I've been down here so long I've forgotten what the grass the trees and even the dirt looks like I haven't seen normal stone in so long I had to go outside in real life just to remember what it looked like but I am only one block of diamond ore away from having nine stacks Aha! Finally, the last one. You know, to be honest, I, I've been digging down here so long, I'm not even sure if I'm on the Project Hydra server anymore. Anyway, let's get up to the surface and we'll count these. All right, looks like we finally made it to the dirt layer. That means we're getting close. What's up, Doc? You ever wonder what nine stacks of diamonds look like all piled up in one big chunk? 
Me neither. Now that's a screenshot. Time to find out how many individual diamonds I get from this giant stack of diamond ore blocks. Now that is a lot of diamonds. The grand total of this episode is 1,367 diamonds. Now you might be asking yourself, hey Fando Man, what are you planning on using those 1,367 diamonds for? What indeed, you may ask? What could I possibly build here at Spawn, the designated mini game district what possible plan could i have that involves a huge grand prize what could i possibly build that involves getting agents together and competing for large sums of diamonds what in deed in the meantime my name has been fando man this is project hydra and i want to thank you very much for watching today's episode. Bye for now.